George Lucas was unhappy at the conclusion of shooting in England. This is the very first Star Wars in 1976. And you uh, were now eight years old? Eight years old, like I said. No, actually, no. You know, like dogs, you got like the second <laughs> years, you're really 11 years old. I was 15 by now. I was just the age for Star Wars. Um, actually, George had shown me the script before he went to England and asked if, if I you know, uh, was available to work on it. And I read it and I thought, man, this is a script for 15 year olds. You thought it, you thought it was strange. You thought it read like a comic book. It did, it did yeah. read like a, a comic, you know, because I, I grew up this, um, watching on uh, late night TV, these old serials, Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon. And, and the dialogue of that uh, script read derivative, you know, of the dialogue from uh, Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon. But anyway, uh, you know, it didn't work out, the timing for me uh, to work on it then. But after he filmed and rap shooting in, in uh, England, uh, he wasn't happy with the work of the, his original editor, um, who had cut A Hard Day's Night. And if you guys know that picture, A Hard Day's Night, I mean, talking about innovative jump cutting kind of, you know, style. Uh, John Jimson, who had edited uh, A Hard Day's Night, um, didn't quite work out for George. So George uh, hired his wife, Marcia Lucas, who's a terrific editor coming off of some pictures with Marty Scorsese. Taxi and, driver among them. Right. And uh, Alice doesn't live here anymore and New York, New York. Um, and, and then she, uh, she originally asked me to join that team and I started working on the opening sequences of Star Wars that had a lot of blue screen still at that time. Uh, and the visual effects were not uh, produced yet or, or weren't completed yet. And then as we were heading toward the end of the year or later that summer, that is, uh, we brought on uh, Paul Hirsch. So there was quite a team there. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing that when, when you first enter these uh, uh, teams, you don't realize what you're going to learn, what you're going to acquire. You're going to have fights, or you're going to disagree. But I think we each brought different talents to different aspects of that picture, so that I learned from each of them things that I was able to apply later on in my solo efforts to other pictures. Can you talk about the the, the I would say the the courage of Marsha Lucas's way to approach to create momentum and say, don't worry about that. We just got to keep it moving and the whole checkerboard mm -hmm. cross-cutting. Can you describe yeah, that? The, you, the way that uh, uh, George had written the script, uh, like most scripts, as you would read it, scenes are uh, written in completion and they're shot that way, you know, like the, the scene has a beginning, middle, and an end. And what I learned from Marsha was the cross-cutting uh, between sequences in order to uh, increase tension so that you don't have to play out a scene. You can just play just, you know, the first third of it and you go to the first third of the next scene and then to the second third of the third scene and then when you can, uh, combine them by intercutting, intercutting the two or three scenes together, you add such an excitement to it because there's a forward momentum that they each add to each other. And that was for me another... Lesson. Uh, you know, mind-bending experience, you know, coming out of the conversation, coming out of Kuka's Nest, and now coming out of Star Wars, I was ready. But no, I, I think that the, the, the courage to trust momentum and your emotions and not worry so much about logic, I, I love that she inspired you that way. And you have to tell a story. I know you told it to it. Uh, to someone who didn't actually air it. So this is the first time it's ever been told before the public. But I love this story about how they, the laser shots <laughs> for oh. the Star Troopers um, were not done yet. And you had to do something with a grease pencil. Will you please describe this? So you, you know, uh, you, you guys that haven't worked in film, you don't realize this, but one of the most valuable tools that uh, you have as an editor when you're working on film is a grease pencil. And a grease pencil has this white waxy uh, residue and you, you can mark up the work print. And um, so when we had these uh, uh, laser battles between Han Solo and the stormtroopers or whoever was shooting at each other, you, all you saw in the, uh, 
in the production dailies when you use that shot is occasionally you see a flash, you know, a production effect that was actually photographed. You see a flash uh, coming from the muzzle of one of the prop guns. And sometimes there wasn't any flash at all. You just see stormtroopers, you know, raising their weapons and you see Han Solo or Luke raising their weapons and, you know, nothing happens. So one of the jobs that I was assigned was to use a grease pencil to mark the frames where the shots were coming from, which gun they were coming from, and which direction uh, these la laser shots would go. So we had to decide, like, okay, in, do we do this in two frames or three frames where it would come from this gun and it would go this direction? And you had to, like, kind of match in uh, intercutting shots what where it would be coming from. So, for instance, if a stormtrooper in the left lower frame, uh, you know, you would... I would mark it up to uh, the to exit the upper right frame, and then when you cut to the reverse and it's coming towards, say, Chewbacca, that it will coming in from the left top frame coming toward the middle of the right frame. So it was pretty painstaking if you can imagine all the different, uh, you know, gun battles that there were. Wouldn't you? There's a lot of grease pencil. <laughs>